My name is Dr. Ariel Lindorf, and I'm a departmental lecturer at the University of Oxford in the Department of Education. My research expertise is in educational effectiveness and school improvement, particularly in primary and secondary schools, as well as on appropriately contextualized approaches to the evaluation of educational initiatives. I was invited by Oxford University Press to conduct an impact study in the form of an evidence analysis, the aim of which was to understand the extent to which promoting well-being in schools can lead to improved student educational outcomes, including but not limited to academic attainment. This was in order to understand the evidence base for the Oxford International Curriculum and also to provide information that might be useful towards the piloting and rollout of that curriculum. In order to evaluate the relevant evidence, I used a systematic strategy to search the academic literature as well as what we call grey literature, meaning reports, working papers, evaluations and such. I included literature that used a range of different but related definitions of well-being and different ways of measuring well-being in order to avoid missing important information by searching too narrowly. I also included primary research studies as well as reviews and meta-analyses, which basically synthesized the results of a number of studies on the same topic or research question. This is still a relatively new body of knowledge, so it was important to be inclusive in the search process. In interpreting the evidence, I tend to place more weight on results from academic journal articles because they've been through a peer review process and on longitudinal rather than cross-sectional studies. A cross-sectional study only measures well-being and educational outcomes at one point in time, so it's impossible to know whether well-being leads to improve attainment, for example, or vice versa. A longitudinal study, on the other hand, takes measurements at more than one time point, so it's easier to understand the story of what might be causing what. Similarly, because the point of the evidence analysis was really to understand the effects of improving well-being on academic attainment and other educational outcomes, I tend to place more weight on evidence from experimental or what we call quasi-experimental studies, which are studies with some sort of a control or at least a comparison group. That is, a group that did not have a well-being intervention or strategy in place. Because of that ability to compare groups with or without a particular intervention or strategy, experimental studies provide good evidence of whether the intervention or the strategy or the approach actually causes the effects that we see in the outcomes. So, what did the evidence analysis find? In brief, there's robust evidence from studies in a wide range of countries across the world in, for example, Europe, Asia, North and South America, Australasia, that show there's a positive relationship between well-being and academic attainment. Although different studies come to varying conclusions about how strong that relationship really is. Well-being has been similarly found to be positively related to student engagement and a number of other outcomes such as positive transitions between primary and secondary school, creativity, and the academic success of students compared to their parents. There don't seem to be any consistent patterns in terms of these relationships being stronger or weaker for certain groups of students, for example, by demographic characteristics, although there's a limited amount of research on this. Looking then at whole school approaches to promoting well-being in particular, the evidence varies a bit. There is a good amount of evidence from experimental and quasi-experimental studies in different countries around the globe, such as the USA, Australia, Bhutan, Mexico, and Peru, that show positive effects on academic attainment. Some other studies have shown positive effects on other outcomes, like motivation, self-esteem, lower dropout rates, and less problem behavior. This is true based on evidence from lower as well as higher income countries. Where studies have not found effects of promoting well-being on student outcomes, there is some indication in the literature that this may relate to implementation problems, such as lack of structure and consistency, 
in the whole school approach, lack of monitoring, or lack of time and resources. Based on the evidence, some of the specific strategies that are advisable in whole school approaches include tailoring and accounting for the specific school context, including self-assessing prior to implementation, so looking at what the assets and the challenges of the school may be that could impede or facilitate positive effects, considering how wider school policy can support implementation, and in particular, keeping an eye out for tensions with other policies in the school that may create competing priorities, taking a cross-level approach, meaning in the classroom as well as across the whole school, actively engaging the wider community, including parents and families, focusing on professional development for teachers to support them with implementation, putting good, sustainable, and relevant monitoring systems in place to keep track of progress and to allow for adjustments as needed to provide the information to inform those, and ensuring that sufficient time and resources are invested to allow for implementation to be successful. Key takeaways from this impact study then are that although the literature does have some mixed results, there does seem to be a good amount of evidence that promoting well-being through whole school approaches can have a positive effect on students' academic attainment, as well as on other outcomes such as motivation or engagement. And that the specific approach to implementation is extremely important to facilitate such positive effects.